Exchange of Elia, but film and media scholar with the focus on gender, queer and film studies, film genre research, and artistic research studies, which is really a uh, very rare specialization and focus. Andrea Bright studied comparative literature, media studies and gender studies in Innsbruck and Newcastle upon time. She had her research stay in Cologne, in Köln, in Berkeley in USA and University of Toronto, Canada. She was a visiting professor of gender studies at the Central European University in Budapest and since 2004, senior scientist at the Institute for Theatre, Film and Media Studies at the University of Vienna, where she was also from 2011 to 19, vice rector at the Academy of Fine Arts. She has numerous functions that I will just quote a few most important, chair of the board of trustees of the Albertina, for example, member of the board of trustees of a Wien Museum, international scientific partner of the Inter-University Research Association devoted to Elfriede Jelinek work, and of course, uh, president of ELIA. I would uh, kindly ask colleagues to turn off their microphones because we are now going to start. And as the president of ELIA, and ELIA was really the key organization in Europe that fostered uh, debate, reflection, uh, and inclusion of the artistic research in higher academic space, because it was not uh, so typical that artists, they, they could got, get grants for their projects, but not really for the artistic research as such, or very rarely. So it was a big, I would say, uh, battle, first to uh, establishing Florence principles and then establishing Vienna Declaration that really uh, addressed the rationale for inclusion of artistic research in higher education practice, uh, but also to, uh, in, uh, to, to debate the ways how artistic research should be intertwined with academic scientific research, but also with the knowledge, create new knowledge, but also how it can <clears throat> contribute to the even uh, professional continuous education. For example, here, yet it's not the case that uh, continuous professional development or education is mostly linked to a uh, vocational part of the new technologies and things like that. So that's about all those challenges that were before were probably also overwhelming in uh, Elia circles and how you succeeded, you and the colleagues, chairs of the board and the members of the board to agree upon and to make a document that is very relevant, consensual, and that can be inspirational for all of us working at art schools in Europe. Well, thank you very much, uh, Milena, for this kind introduction. Um, you yourself know so much about uh, Elia having been part of uh, the boards. And uh, thank you, Mariana, also very much for the invitation. It's great to be in Belgrade. Um, I had a great flight and uh, it's uh, Died. It's still great to be in this international uh, space uh, in Zoom, and uh, uh, fortunately, we do not have to wear masks here. So, um, could I please ask the moderator to allow me to share my screen because I have a little presentation I would like to share. Um, what I am going to do over the next uh, half an hour or so is I would like to um, 
I would like to uh, give you a uh, context of artistic research in Europe and about the uh, policies uh, concerning artistic Euro, uh, concerning uh, artistic research, also uh, the steps of development that led to the um, documents that Mila um, spoke about. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm still not. I have to be made host. I think so. I can share uh, or co-host at least. Can someone make the, that? Uh, have you tried? Yeah, I have tried, but. Uh, Mirena, can you, or who is the real host uh, who can make Andrea host to uh, share slides? Uh, just a moment. I, I want to, to try to find that option. I have to admit that I don't know this option, uh, how to you make go, someone from participants. to the participants list and uh, besides my name, there should be three dots or some or more or so. And if you press that, I think there's this option to make me co-host. I, I think that now, okay, can you try? Yes, now it's fine. Thank you, thank you. So, um, right. So uh, you should see the presentation now, right? Yes? Yes, wonderful. Yes. Okay, so artistic research in the European higher arts education context. Um, I would like to start by, um, saying something about the, the context really why artistic research could be uh, established in the um, in the European higher arts education area and this is obviously due to the Bologna process so with the Bologna declaration in 1999 the uh, European research area established um, uh, this uh, this area where with the Bergen community in uh, 2005, the third cycle was really being stressed. Now the third cycle being um, the doctoral education after the BA and MA cycle, the doctoral education is the third cycle and the Bergen community um, stressed that structural programs and uh, the necessity to support research structures in all tertiary education. So this was a really important uh, document which kind of started the trend that uh, all universities, also art universities, also art faculties within big research universities had to uh, confront this idea that they had to do research also in order to establish their studies in the third cycle. And uh, within this trend, a lot of countries uh, granted also art universities the right to um, award doctoral degrees. Uh, for example, also uh, Austria. Uh, Austria was granted this right in um, 2002, where the art universities uh, were addressed in the University Act of 2002, as all other universities also being able to award the doctorates. Um, another important uh, document in this, um, in this context are the uh, Salzburg principles that the European University Association developed in 2005. And here it was laid out that the core component of doctoral training is the advancement of knowledge. Oops, sorry. Uh, is the, advance, is the advancement of knowledge through original research, is uh, the uh, uh, acknowledgement of doctoral candidates as early stage researchers. So doctoral students are not students, but they are early stage researchers. Uh, it's stated that supervision is crucial. It's stated 
the importance of interdisciplinarity, of transferability, of mobility, and of funding, among other things. I think the uh, most important uh, point here is the move away from students to early stage researchers. So this terminology is really important. And also the stress on supervision, I think is really important because uh, following the Salzburg principles by the EOA, a real paradigmatic shift in doctoral education could start namely uh, kind of leaving this model of doctor father, doctor mother, and one student behind and entering a phase of structural doctorates. So structural uh, doctoral education, where we have team supervision, where there is more than just the one kind of all powerful doctor father, doctor mother, uh, but where, where we have also peer support of the doctoral candidates and so on and so forth. So this was really, really important, the, uh, this document, the Salzburg Principles. And um, I just wanted to quote that because that would become also important then later for the Florence Principles. Um, well, what is artistic research? Um, fortunately, I have to say we are at a stage where we do not have to kind of ask this question all the time anymore because uh, over two decades, I would say two or three decades, the practice of artistic research is so firmly established that uh, we do not have to uh, define it anymore because it is there and we just do it. So uh, th this is very good. Still, of course, I would like to give you some uh, frames, uh, at least what I uh, always use as a kind of working definition of what artistic research uh, might be. So my working definition is that artistic research is the work of generating knowledge by applying artistic methods to explicit research questions. So um, that's the most important thing. I think artistic research is art. Artistic research is artistic practice, is uh, gaining knowledge with artistic means and not with research means in terms of reading books or, um, or, or, or the like, but it's, uh, you know, applying artistic methods. So the artistic research project follows the same steps as the scientific uh, research project, um, applying other means, but following the same steps. So the steps are um, putting a research question, which is explicitly situated in the state of the art of the respective field of artistic inquiry. Um, and here it has to be said that the different art disciplines have different ways of formulating that question and also different traditions of artistic research. Then a method for the undertaking of the research is chosen or developed. And interim results and the results are presented to a fellow community of professionals in the field. So again, important in the field of art and in the field of artistic research. And the research uh, results are disseminated through what the community has agreed upon to be appropriate channels. Um, so that's the kind of, in a nutshell, uh, um, definition, working definition of artistic research. And I do hope that um, uh, we, we, can, we can speak about that or discuss that in, in the discussion. And I would be very curious what you say to that uh, within the context of your uh, practice and also of your uh, university framework. So, uh, Moving on to the paper that we did in uh, 2016, the uh, Florence Principles stipulating uh, some standards of the doctorates in artistic research. So um, really, 
it was quite easy what we did actually. We looked at the existing European papers about the doctoral studies and asked, are they relevant for artistic research doctorates or are they not relevant? And um, very easily and very immediately we said, well, actually every point is relevant and every point is really the same. Sometimes we need to formulate it in a different way, but the general standards of doctoral education uh, is absolutely valid for doctoral education in artistic research as well. So the validity of the Salzburg recommendations, the uh, validity of the EU principles of innovative doctoral training uh, for artistic research was said to be uh, true. We talk about in the paper about the qualifications, about the supervisors uh, and of the importance that supervisors select who they are going to supervise a very important quality assurance standard that uh, the supervisors must be involved in the selection of the doctoral candidates. There are some uh, academic practices, for example, in the United Kingdom, where this is not the case. But we said in the uh, Florence Principles that this is very important. Second, uh, or third rather, uh, we talk about the career perspectives. So, um, we say in the Florence Principles, it is not uh, the, the, um, the rationale behind our paper that now every artist must gain a PhD in order to get a job at the art university, but rather uh, it uh, kind of opens career perspectives to those who want to continue a career in artistic research. But of course, not every artist wants to uh, be active in the field of artistic research. Uh, we talk about the doctoral work and define it as an original contribution to the artistic field and in specificity to the field of artistic research. The doctoral work um, consists of artwork and contains a discursive, reflexive and documentary component. So we do say that there should be a written component in the uh, doctoral work of artistic research, but it should only be complementary to the artistic work. We talk about the research environment necessary and we talk about supervision in, in an expanded uh, way. Um, uh, also, you might uh, be aware of the uh, project that um, Elia is also part of in advancing supervision in artistic research doctorates. So at the upcoming Elia biennial conference, we will also have a session on that um, project that actually originated also from the Florence principles in terms of uh, us saying, well, supervision, this is the most important topic right at the moment and we want to look more closely at it. And the last point in the Florence Principles, the question of dissemination. So how do we disseminate the results of artistic research doctorates? It's a uh, difficult and important question because it was uh, said before already, uh, artistic research is presented in um, formats of exhibitions, of concerts, of performances. So it's not necessar necessarily only books that you can put on the shelf, but you have to find um, different ways to uh, store the results of artistic research. So uh, continuing now to the, um, to the Vienna Declaration that Milena uh, also already mentioned, this is the second um, this is the second paper that Elia was, uh, was crucial in formulating in. Uh, it was published this year. And here we go, I think, uh, in a uh, different direction. It's, we, we don't talk about the doctoral uh, education and artistic research, but we talk about how artistic research can be recognized more in the research area of the U European Union and of the European uh, research area. 
And one of the most important points in order to be recognized in a more fundamental way is the inclusion of artistic research as a category in the Frascati Manual. So the Frascati Manual, uh, and uh, most of you uh, will know that, is a manual um, edited by the OECD for the uh, statistical uh, endeavors in the area of uh, research and development. So it's basically a catalog of scientific disciplines and everything that is in the Frascati manual as a discipline and as a subdiscipline gets accounted for by the statistics, right? So take, for example, mathematics. Of course, mathematics as a discipline is in the Frascati manual, and that results uh, that we know exactly how much money, for example, is spent on research projects in the field of mathematics. We know exactly what kind of money in what countries goes into the field of mathematics, how many researchers on how many projects and so on and so forth, right? So as artistic research is not yet properly included in the Frascati manual, the statistics do not account for it. That's the one side. And the other side is that the Frascati manual is also the guiding document for um, the European Union when it decides on how to draw up the policy papers, how to draw up the funding programs. So it's really, really important to be included in the Frascati manual. The Frascati Manual, and this is the third reason why it's so important to be included in there, defines research and development. And uh, we we think and we say in the Vienna Declaration that artistic research qualifies in that sense to be included in research and development because artistic research meets the five core criteria. Artistic research is novel, so novelty is, is, is one of the most important criteria for research that you, know, you are prone to do new findings. You are prone to expand the knowledge. Second, um, it's based on original, not obvious concepts and hypotheses. So research in artistic research is creative. Well, I think this criteria is the most easily met then third, um, there is this level of uncertainty of the research, right? So when you start your research, you do not know the outcome. So that's also one of the defin core definitions of research and development. Fourth, um, you have to be systematic in the research. So maybe that's, the, uh, that's a trickier one, right? how to be systematic in artistic research, how to stick to methods and how to explicate the methods. And then the last one, maybe that's the most difficult one uh, in the research, uh, the research has to be transferable and or reproducible. So now, of course, this is uh, something that you really have to take into account when you do artistic research, because usually when you do art, it's all about not being reproducible, right? So, and this I think is the most important difference also between artistic practice and the practice of artistic research. So artistic research does have to have a um, documentary and systematic um, side that makes the results in a way reproducible, right? That doesn't have to mean that when you, for example, do artistic research in the field of painting, that you uh, have to be able to reproduce a painting in the exact same way, but you have to be able to follow the steps of how it was done in a way that makes the result reproducible by uh, theory or by definition. So um, 
There are several approaches to artistic research, and now we enter the field that um, is uh, really become my specialization, also the field of artistic research studies. So um, there are a lot of theoretical ways of looking at artistic research, and I have brought along uh, some, so maybe uh, I only want to pick out um, one, the so-called critical approach. Uh, and here I brought along a quote by Annette Baldauf and Anna Hofner from 2015. And they say, art-based research projects pick at modern understandings of science and its master narratives. They challenge the Western modern research ethos, making use of unconventional methods. Their promise is that of unsettlement critical art-based research wants to tear holes into the matrix of understanding, establish irritating connections and dissolve conventions of saturation. So this is a very idealistic and very, um, uh, maybe also optimistic, look at artistic research. So Baldauf and Hofner say that, um, they basically say that artistic research is the better research because it's the critical research. Artistic research is the research that takes into account post-colonial, um, uh, anti-racist, non-sexist uh, uh, ways of doing research, right? So they are really uh, interested in this investment of unsettlement, as they call it. So artistic research produces knowledge that uh, makes us unlearn what we know, right? To use this term by uh, coined by Fred Moten. So um, this is this kind of uh, approach that is around a lot because uh, as you, uh, uh, of course, know, art universities are places of um, criticality. Art universities are places where the critical thinking and the critical practice is very important. So I think it's only natural that there is this uh, approach that artistic research should be this kind of critical research. Um, there are other uh, approaches, uh, maybe just uh, picking out uh, one more uh, term that's important, I think, and this is transdisciplinarity. So uh, transdisciplinarity is a core, is of core importance to artistic research. And in the definition of Jürgen Mittelstrass, transdisciplinarity is a form of scientific work which arises in cases concerning the solution of non-scientific problems, right? So the trans in transdisciplinarity refers to the outside of the academic, outside of university. And the questions outside of university are brought into the research uh, design. So um, this is an important point, I think, and uh, just to, to, just to ref refer to it very uh, quickly. Um, I have brought with me uh, an example, and we could look uh, for a few moments into a film, and I would really like to share that with you. It's a work by Belinda Kasim Kaminsky. Uh, she is a Vienna-based artist, um, and it's called Unearthing. And uh, it lasts for 12 minutes, but I will only show maybe four minutes or so. Uh, but I think it's great to, uh, to look also at something and then to uh, also look at the way of how um, Belinda uh, talks about her artistic research and what she is doing in that, right? So I have to uh, stop this sharing and um, go to, oops, sorry. So go to share. So you should see now this uh, screen, right? Okay, so yes, I started and, uh, after about four minutes, I will uh, finish. And please give me a sign if you do not hear the sound.
We do not hear the sound. Do you hear it? It's, I mean, there is no sound almost. Hang on. No sound at all. I can hear it now when my sound now is on maximum. Yeah, it's when she, when she starts speaking, then uh, we will you will hear it. I think. Ah. The first time I encounter you is in Frankfurt, 2014. I look at old ethnographic materials, photographs taken by an ethnographer and his collaborators. There is a connection, something that clings to me. The immediacy of a colonial flashback, an uncanny familiarity lingers. My eyes are meeting yours. I wish that you would open up and tell me what you were thinking while standing there. I wish that the thoughts of your past could channel through the materiality of the representation, that they would creep right into my present, be transferred to me whenever we lock eyes. I want to know what you were thinking. How can I talk to you, the people on the photographs? How can we communicate? While I try to formulate my questions, it seems as if the others, ethnographers, photographers, missionaries, writers, are always in the way. Their words, their photographs, their everything. There is a proverb used in various African countries, loosely translated it says, until the lion has his or her own storyteller, the hunter will always have the best part of the story. Some people read my first attempt as pop art. Other ones say that the collages remind them of Baldessari, as if this would be the reason I chose to use the red, blue, and yellow squares. Red, blue, and yellow, of the nowadays Democratic Republic of the Congo. What does it mean to cover you with the colors of that flag, the colors of a nation that discriminates you and questions your belonging? And by the way, I don't even like flags. Still, it's not about the colors. It's the strategy I applied that I question. Besides wanting to focus on the economy, your images from books that have preserved themselves since the first colonial encounter. Books that keep on inviting and enabling to become colonial agents. But by doing so, I have covered you up, making it impossible for you to address the spectators to look back.
So, um, I'm sorry that I, I stopped the film when it when it gets uh, to one, I think, uh, but uh, in, in terms of time, I think it's, it's better. So um, I have uh, brought this uh, question of uh, this, this quote of Belinda Kasim Kaminsky when she talks about her method and I have marked in red uh, the kind of uh, verbs that she uses to describe this method. And if we just read that quote uh, and then maybe reflect if this is a hint of how artistic research can meet this um, definition also by the Frascati uh, manual, you know, of novelty, of originality, of reproducibi uh, reproducibility and so on. So um, uh, Belinda Kasim Kaminsky says, in unearthing in conversation, Paul Shebester's photographs serve as entrance points to a performative negotiation of the lingering effects of colonialism in the past, present, and future. So already this performative negotiation, I think, is a very interesting uh, coining that she situates herself in this performative photography uh, state of the art of artistic practice and uh, negotiation of course is also something that it's not representation it's not a uh, dialogue also so it's negotiation it's interactive inspired by my reading of Saida Hartman's Scenes of Subjection, Terror, Slavery, and Self-Making in 19th Century America, I became interested in understanding the specific scenes of subjection in the frame of Chabestas research. I reflected on the possibilities of retelling the stories I encountered in the archive without representing or reproducing violence and thereby feeding the desire for black suffering because I felt the need to talk about what was happening and how it is related to what is happening in the present. My work is an act of digging up what lingers right beneath the surface, unrecognizable to some and impossible to shake off for others. By creating artistic constellations in which the haunting effects of colonialism in Europe, particularly in Austria, can be verbalized and negotiated. I am attempting to unsettle white innocence by verbalizing what is silenced and suppressed. Working in a variety of mediums, collage, photography, installation, performance, I am interested in regimes of looking, representations of so-called otherness and the past, present, and future of decolonialization. I use dialogue as a structure to connect with the people photographed by Shebesta. So um, her method, again, in a kind of um, overview, um, and really, I think it's very kind of telling, and it's a, a, um, an explicit example of how artistic research can uh, distinguish itself from artistic practice, right? So what Belinda here does is, uh, a video work, yes, but it's a video work that is a result of a research project, of a research process. And for the artist, it is important to, and it's also necessary to explicate the research process, to stipulate what the methods were, and so on and so forth. So there are some uh, discussions, I, uh, some questions for discussions, um, you know, just uh, uh, put here, but of course uh, we can discuss uh, whatever you would like to discuss. So uh, there are um, uh, these uh, options, but really um, I am now at uh, the end of my presentation and I'm very much looking forward uh, to our discussion. So, um, thank you very much. I can't
učio mi se. Or to other colleagues, to that are artists and that are mentoring and supervising artistic research to enter, I would uh, um, ask one issue that for me is a little bit controversial. You you have started the presentation saying that artistic research is generating new knowledge. But then going for, forward throughout your explanation, you said about new values, new understandings, new interpretations, and so on. So for me, the question is, should we really insist upon uh, new knowledge after artistic research, because exactly this work uh, that we saw the last one, but many, for example, uh, again about silence in Germany, the works of Jochen Gertz, for example, or numerous, they're really, okay, the, the scientific part of the Holocaust, for example, is researched or about slavery and so on. So there are data archives, academic, but understandings, interpretations, uh, bringing ethical di dimension to contemporaneity, that's where the artistic research, I think, is far more privileged than classical academic knowledge facts generating research. So why do Vienna Declaration and also you uh, insisted on generating knowledge? Why it is not about generating new ethics and values? Well, this is, of course, this is a very, very, very good question coming uh, from you. And um, the, the, you know, the question of knowledge is um, really crucial. I mean, I think there is uh, two reasons or there's maybe more, but two reasons come to my mind why we insist on knowledge. The one is because um, obviously we need to stay tuned also to the definitions of research and development done for the general uh, framework of the ac general academic framework. And here, uh, of course, it's always knowledge that is uh, talked about. 